Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to CISCREATE Science First Podcast. You will view many of these this year. They are critically important to the class. Much of the information that you're required to know for the tests will come from these online lectures. The purpose of the podcast is to, number one, help fill in the gaps in understanding that you may have after completing the reading and note-taking homework. And purpose number two is that podcasts can help those of us with differing learning styles. The beauty of the podcast lecture is that you can watch it at your own pace, pause the podcast when you need to, and even rewind it and watch it again if you miss something. You can also go back and watch it, or parts of it, to prepare for the test. Our first podcast of the Introduction to Science unit will be called Scientific Investigations. Scientific investigations include topics such as various scientific methods and experimental procedures. This section begins with an essential question. An essential question is an open-ended question that helps guide us through the reading, listening, viewing, and note-taking of our lessons. Its purpose is to act as a filter. Anything we experience in our studies needs to pass through this filter. If something we read, hear, or view helps us to answer the essential question, it is important that we should pay close attention to it. That usually means to include it in our notes. If it fails to help us answer the essential question, we shouldn't spend much time on it. This reading section's essential question is, how do scientists discover things? This should already be part of the notes you've taken on your reading homework. By the end of the section, you should be able to summarize the processes and characteristics of different kinds of scientific investigations. What are some of the parts that make up scientific investigations? Well, first would be an experiment. An experiment is an organized procedure to study something under controlled conditions. We'll speak later concerning what controlled conditions are. Another part of scientific investigation is observation. Observation is the process of obtaining information by using your five senses. Can you name your five senses? Your five senses are sight, smell, touch, sound, and taste. While you need to be careful using all of your senses in the lab, the two senses you need to be the most careful using are touch, items may be hot or corrosive, and taste, they can be harmful or poisonous. A hypothesis is a testable idea or explanation that leads to a scientific investigation. When an observation you make results in a question you may have, a hypothesis is a possible answer to that question. Sort of an educated guess. I like to call it an educated answer because you'll be using past experiences or previous studies to help you come to that answer. A hypothesis must be testable. A hypothesis being testable means that it's possible to make an observation that can agree or disagree with it. If a hypothesis cannot be tested by making observations, it is not scientific. Consider this statement. There are invisible creatures all around us that we can never observe in any way. This statement may or may not be true, but it's not a scientific hypothesis. That's because it can't be tested. Given the nature of the hypothesis, there are no observations a scientist could make to test whether or not it's false. A scientific hypothesis must also be falsifiable. A hypothesis may be testable, But that even that isn't enough for it to be a scientific hypothesis. In addition, it must be possible to show the hypothesis is false, if it really is false. Consider this statement. There are other planets in the universe where life exists. This statement is testable. If it's true, it's at least theoretically possible to find evidence showing that it's true. For example, a spacecraft could be sent from Earth to explore the universe and report back if it discovers an inhabited planet. If such a planet were found, it would prove the statement true. However, the statement isn't a scientific hypothesis. Why? Because if it's false, it's not possible to show that it's false. The spacecraft may never find an inhabited planet, but that doesn't mean necessarily that there isn't one. Given the vastness of the universe, we would never be able to check every planet for life. Independent and dependent variables. 
A variable is any factor that can change in a scientific investigation. An independent variable is the factor that a scientist intentionally changes. There should be only one independent variable in a well-conceived, well-designed investigation. The dependent variable is the factor that changes as a result of the independent variable being changed. Data is the information gathered by observation and experimentation. It can be something a scientist perceives through her senses or detects through her instruments. Scientists use data to determine relationships between independent and dependent variables in an investigation. Types of scientific methods. Scientists follow disciplined pathways in their search for validation of their hypotheses. But these pathways are not always the same for every scientist or for every investigation. The scientific method has many of these possible pathways. One possible pathway is as follows. Define the problem. After making an observation or reading scientific reports, a scientist might be curious about a topic. A scientific problem is a specific question that a scientist wants to answer. The problem must be well-defined or precisely stated so it can be investigated. Forming hypotheses and making predictions. When a scientist forms a hypothesis, they are making an educated guess to an answer of their question. A hypothesis must be tested to determine if it's correct. Before testing, a scientist will usually make a prediction about what will happen in the investigation. In making a prediction, a scientist will take trustworthy de details they have read or previous knowledge they may have and use those details to support what they think will happen next. Planning the investigation. An investigation is also called the experiment. A scientific investigation or experiment must be carefully planned so it tests the hypothesis in a meaningful way. Care must be taken to assure the experiment is carefully controlled. The independent variable of an experiment will be identified in the hypothesis. They also must determine other possible variables that will need to be controlled. Being controlled means that in the experiment, they must not be allowed to change. Remember, only one independent variable, the scientist change variable, is allowed in a well-designed experiment. Measuring the dependent variable, the results. Scientists must decide how they will measure the dependent variable, the one that changes because of the change in the independent variable. The dependent variable can often be measured in different ways. For example, if the dependent variable is fish health, scientists could measure the fish's size, or their weight, or their number of offspring. Collecting and organizing data. The data, or information, collected in an investigation must be recorded and properly organized so that it can be analyzed. Data such as measurements and numbers are often organized into tables, spreadsheets, or graphs. Analyzing data. After finishing data collection, scientists must analyze their information. They need to answer the question, what does all this data tell me? What does it all mean? Conclusions. Does the analysis of your resulting data support your hypothesis? This will be your conclusion. If the evidence does not support your hypothesis, you need to rethink the problem and come up with a new hypothesis. If the evidence does support your hypothesis, share the results with other scientists. Be prepared to defend your conclusions if they're challenged by other scientists. Good investigations. All good scientific investigations share some important characteristics. They need to be well documented and have good supporting evidence. The non-independent variables must be controlled. Remember, only one independent variable is allowed. Good investigations should also be repeated multiple times, and other scientists should be able to replicate the investigation. Reliability. Scientific information can be found in many places. Some sources are much more trustworthy than others. Scientific papers published in scientific journals are by far the most reliable, while commercial web pages are often unreliable 
because they're trying to sell something. Make sure you check for any underlying biases an author may have. If they're trying to push a political, religious, or commercial point of view, the research may be faulty or biased. Well, that's the end of our first podcast, guys. In the future, most of these will not be this long. I hope it was helpful. Remember, you can view the podcast as often as you like. If you have any questions, be sure to record them in your journal and ask me in class. Thanks. I'll see you soon.